elements of cycling that can seem quite daunting. Riding in a big group, for example, doing a descent, going on your first solo ride, or even your first night ride. So, in this video, we thought we'd share some tips on how to build your confidence on the bike so you can head out and enjoy your bike ride no matter what. So, here we go. Something which often makes people not confident about going on long rides or rides that are far from home is they're worried about what will happen if they encounter a mechanical problem. So make sure that you're mechanically savvy and you know how to fix the most common issues such as punctures or little issues with your, your gears or your brakes or maybe your seat post slipping. Treat yourself to a good quality saddle bag that you can fit in some spares and some tools and also invest in a good quality multi-tool as this will get you out of most pickles. And in terms of doing these jobs and fixing these things on your bike, well, if you're not sure how to do it, we've got loads of videos over on GCN Tech that can explain and show you how to do it. Descending can be one of the most daunting aspects of cycling. But learn to brake and learn the power of braking needed to descend faster with more confidence. It may be that you're a little bit worried about letting your speed rise on a descent because you're worried you're not going to be able to stop in time for a corner. But learning how to brake and learning how your bike handles, you're going to have a lot more confidence in letting that speed rise, knowing you're going to be able to stop in time for the corner. Being more confident on the descent is not only going to make you faster, but it's also going to make you safer as well. You won't feel like you have to take risks to catch up your mate or constantly check behind to see if there's any cars that you're holding up, which all makes for a more enjoyable ride. Learn not to brake at times too. You don't always need to reach for the levers. For example, braking in the middle of a corner is actually gonna throw you out and really make handling the bike hard. So you wanna correct your speed before coming into the corner, not in the corner. The same goes for on group rides. You don't want to see a pothole and just immediately slam on your brakes because that can actually cause a crash in the group. If you do have a habit of doing this, try and be more relaxed on the bike and Try not to slam on and then only use your brakes when you really need to. Another good tip is let people know where you're riding. Now you can do this a number of different ways. You could share your live location on your phone. Or if you've got a modern head unit such as well, Wahoo one, they actually have a live track feature built in. They sync to your phone and then you know people who you know can track you and see where you're going and uh, how you're getting on. Manon, where are you going today and how far? Well, I haven't actually got a route planned, so I think I'm going to wing it a little bit, just explore some new roads, so who knows where I'm going to end up. Cool. Well, give me three rings when you get in. Ciao. Another good skill to have on the bike is being able to look behind you safely. You can check where your mates are. Ollie? Where's Ollie? Oh, dropped him. <laughs> you can look behind, see if there's any upcoming traffic before turning and if you're really savvy, to see how big of a gap you've got in a race. Practice looking over your shoulder briefly whilst giving yourself plenty of space in the road to make sure you don't deviate too much from your line. Practice until you can get closer to the gutter. Pro level, take one hand off the bars and fully rotate round to see what's behind you whilst holding your line. Have the confidence that sometimes it's okay to get dropped. I mean, trust me, I'm well, bit of a bit of an expert. And in many instances, it can be advantageous. So for example, if you're starting a big mass start event, often people get caught up in the excitement and the adrenaline and they go off far too hard only to blow up later on. It's better if you don't try and follow them and that way you'll finish stronger in the event rather than blowing up early on. Another example is when you're on a long climb. It's more efficient to ride at a sort of steady state effort maintaining a pace the whole way up. Other people might try and surge or attack. Don't try and go with them if you're struggling, just maintain your own pace, concentrate on what you can do. And a great exponent of this is Tom de Moulin. He actually has used this to win races like the Giro d'Italia, when other riders were surging and attacking around him on really tough climbs. If you want to watch the Giro, I mean, why wouldn't you? I mean, Italy stunning. Then, well, you can. It's on GCN Plus, on demand, live, ad-free, and uh, 
well, territory restrictions do apply. We've, we've got worldwide rights, but um, yeah, so, sorry, New Zealand. Sorry about that. And above all, riding with others is the best way to improve your confidence on the bike. You'll be able to learn from other riders just by watching them and they can tell you what aspects of your riding you can improve. And also riding with others is a great way to stay social and ride further using the draft from other riders. All right. Where's, where's your bike? Where's your helmet? You're not coming for a ride? Yeah, it's not really feeling it today, to be honest. Seriously? It's a bit wet, yeah. I was I'm, relying... gonna, um, I'm gonna ride with others on the turbo. Have a good one though. I was relying on you and dragging me up the mountain. Yeah, see you later. Oh, solo one today then. So those were some of our top tips on how to feel confident on the bike. If you did enjoy this video, then make sure to give it a big thumbs up and let us know what makes you feel confident out on the bike. What, what makes you feel confident, Ollie? Knowing that I'm one of the few people on planet Earth to have dropped Alberto Contador. Fair one.